This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And it's a lovely day out there yet again. And uh, this morning, uh, amidst a whole series of worrying uh, information coming out of uh, the center point of uh, what is our collective religion in Sri Lanka, cricket, uh, and what the going on at the cricket board, and also, more, very importantly, uh, just as importantly, the ability of every government to virtually force the state banks to invest money in state-owned enterprises, in effect, throwing money down the drain. To discuss that is a very senior banker this morning with us, Mr. Rusri Pala Tanakun. Very good morning to you, Mr. Rusri Pala. Good morning, Paras. It's a lovely country we live in, isn't it, really? Why, why not? My God, most certainly. Oh, well, when you go to Guinea Athena, and when you look at the lush greenery, and you go to Trincomalee, and you see those, the sands there, and you go to Veligama, and you look at the wonderful bay, <laughs> and uh, all these tourists uh, who pay thousands and thousands of top dollar coming here to do a bit of surfing, pasik, uh, it's, it's It's a marvelous place, isn't it? Amazing. And the serenity of our places of worship, and the, the historical sites. It's a, it's a wonderful country, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. I mean, we have every moment of it should be uh, loved by everybody in this country. Mm. Be proud of the country. Mm. Be proud of the nature, at least. At least. But what is with our politicians, successive governments, they come in and they force the state banks, literally force them, um, to make investments, to give monies, so-called loans, to state-owned enterprises. And these monies are never paid back. There's never a, a rate of return or anything on, it's not a commercial decision. Yeah. Um, and then what happens is that these, are le these loans, although never paid back and never serviced, or, or serviced in, in a terrible way, they are allowed to remain on the books thereby sort of boosting, giving an illusion of a very profitable institution. Isn't, am I about right in, in what I've said so far? You are very correct, 100%. The problem is, this reflects the minds and the activities or actions of the politicians in this country. Yeah. They choose the easiest way out. Yeah. They don't get involved in anything in a serious manner. They want to shirk their responsibilities they want to do the the least that they should do yeah. and uh, uh, just pass while away the time and then uh, uh, come to the end of their period. During that period, when they find that they want something, they resort to the easiest available source and then they try to fulfill that as if they are trying doing a big thing. What they are doing is a crime. In other words, you know, yeah. they have no right absolutely yeah to direct the banks knowing very well that you are directing them for a purpose which is unproductive, which is wasting uh, for the public money to be utilized that way. If they do for any required reason on an assessed basis, they must come to arrive at that decision with a follow-up action, mm. immediately following up, you know, what after that? After the pumping in of the monies to a, a deceased SOE, yeah. you know, ailing S SOE, you know, a, a state uh, enterprise, yeah. you know, they must follow it up to see what happens to this money, where does it go, what increase of production that it will yield. None of the things are happening, no. They simply get that thing done and they are happy with it. The whole problem is with the politicians who, who, are care, who care less to find out what they are directing the banks to do. They are not interested. They simply give, because the easiest way out, easiest, now take for example for us, yeah. the most recent action of the government. Yeah. Enterprise, what do, you, what do you call it? Enterprise Sri Lanka. Enterprise Sri Lanka. In effect, what are they doing? They are getting the banks to do their job. That is to lend for development. Yeah. 
if the banks were doing it on their own yes. no enterprise sri lanka is necessary hmm. every day is enterprise in sri lanka for a bank yeah <laughs> correct for a bank properly functioning yeah with a will to support the development of the country yeah and with a will to support the people of the country hmm. you don't need to inject this uh, new theories enterprise and this and that it is embodied in their acts who who dreams up this uh and this pr things i don't i don't blame the i don't blame the politicians and in such instances because when they see that these things are drifting yeah and just drifting along yeah. nothing happening yeah. they at least have to do something no mm. so that we 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 must appreciate that but in the, at the same time what are these people in these banks doing why are they paid performance low, uh, bonuses why are they given so much of perks why are they given so much of liberty to play duck and drake with public to control them they called it an autonomy now this is a escape road no for the banks what well, well, what autonomy when they when they have to keep giving money out a complete misnomer and a misdirection to mislead the ministers the so called uh, people who are all on top of them uh, they say that we have given a autonomy but re recently mr rispala there was a some wish blow sent us a list of um uh what is it called non performing loans <laughs> yeah. given by uh, the people's bank yes uh and this is the corporate non performing loans it was about 8 billion rupees worth there and it was amazing some of the things that when you look at some of those names mm -hmm. they were clearly politically exposed people behind the, some of those companies yeah and um, very flippant um none of the most of the assets are uh, sort of not worth the paper it's written on <laughs> you see now that that's a uh, 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 it's not the total reflection of the correct position for us yeah. i must tell you yeah. after i think you or somebody some journalist mentioned this yeah. and it appeared in the papers in the public media yeah. i also made an examination yeah. you know what you are referring to as a list of past dues or yeah. non performing loans yeah. is only one part of the uh, advances of advances given by one department of the bank Oh, just by the corporate bank. By the corporate banking sector. Right. But there are several other sectors of the bank which have advanced money so that's in the similar way which yeah. have fallen into the same fate. But when once fallen into that similar fate, yeah, into that tin of uh of bad debt. Yes. Yes. And they don't service it, then it should be moved into non-performing loan, right? it has because you know it, it, it there is no necessity for somebody to move it yeah. the systems are done in such a way that when certain number of uh, uh, installments or repayments for become overdue they automatically get transferred to the npl now those are the systems now the banks are frantically trying to keep them in the book running current sections just to show in large profits enhanced we, profits and when we look at the uh, uh, the remuneration yes to the senior officials of the bank it's based on what on performance <laughs> so say, what's the performance no i think it has two things now i we we heard yeah as a politician of course he's a green horn <laughs> in the political scenario yeah but you know he was mentioning in in reply to a question in the parliament about the when some mp opposition group they asked raised a question about the amount that is paid to the ceo of the people's bank yeah you know the answer that came from the government side was very very discouraging he was saying no when we hire people for expert post yeah we have to pay that minister who answered that in that slimy manner yeah. should know when he says that the person has been engaged to do a special type of job yeah he was not sane enough to look into the next bank in the country how much that ceo is paid in the permanent card eh, mm. to compare whether this amount that is paid to this contract fellow is more or less 
H how does it work and why is it that uh, the banks are, uh, the especially the state banks, are uh, relying on um, outsourcing their recruitment needs? Surely the, the whole uh, ethos uh, at working at one of these state uh, enterprises is that you, you, you work, up, work up the ladder, you come up the carder, with, along with the carder. And, and is there a real need to uh, uh, employ agents? Absolutely no for us. This is something that the trade unions and everybody vehemently oppose because these carders are meant for, you know, you take the central bank, yeah. does the central bank outsource employees? Hmm. They allow the people to grow with the institution, Absolutely. grow up with the institution. You pave ways for them to increase, improve their knowledge, you know, acquire new techniques while they are in service. And they have a contractual obligation, you know, to end up with that institution. You know, they, they finally uh, retire from that institution. And even their obligations even continue thereafter. Mm. Because you are buying, bound so much to the institution from the beginning. I mean, you grow up with the institution, you contribute to the institution. When you retire also, you live because of the institution. I mean, that is the attitude. There is what is called a succession planning. Now, what is succession planning? You allow the people in the permanent cadre, you know, in the next succession, who is going to be the next general manager? Who is going to be the next deputy general manager? You are grooming them. You are grooming them. It, when you don't have such situations, yeah. you know, people come from nowhere and then they advise, okay, the best thing to do is to take some people from somewhere. And they take on contract. And after taking, at least, do they address this issue of succession planning? At least, you know, while they are, while these contractors are on the job, temporarily, casually, for a shorter period, I mean, it can be okay. Yes. But then, thereafter, have they focused attention on this? In the People's Bank, you take the Bank of Ceylon. Doesn't happen there. I mean, no, we are. I mean, we must, uh, we must respect that uh, management. Right. Now then, um, we have uh, a couple of questions um, from uh, our viewers. One is, Enterprise Sri Lanka is a good exercise to force banks to give credit to companies. All banks in Sri Lanka are, on, are only lending to large entities and the SME uh, sector is totally ignored. Why is this initiative bad by the government? No, no, this is not a bad, who said it's a bad initiative? Mm. It is an initiative in the uh, final analysis. It's uh, desperately done by the government, having seen that the banks are not doing their job. And another quick one. Given the discussion today, is it safer not to use state banks? I don't know, that is left to the people, you have to build up an image, you know, only, only thing that we can talk about the state banks is, they are backed by the government, yes. unlike any other institution, yes. and that's the strongest support that any bank can have, All right. so they still have that. Let, let's move on, uh, this is a very important question, somebody is saying, to, but it's nothing to do with uh, banking, it's all to do with the strength of govern, governance. India's uh, apparently intent on forcing our politi politicians to give in to their territorial gains. Now, the proof of this is yeah. we've had a steady stream of visitors to India, yeah. right? Um, the, the politicians, the government and the opposition have been invited to India. They went there. And I think uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa went there yesterday, or, yeah. in, or today is our meeting there. And then we understand that when uh, Prime Minister Vikramasinghe comes back from Vietnam, yeah. we, uh, which by the way is his second visit uh, during this month to, to Vietnam, yeah. uh, maybe he likes it so much that he might even stay there. Who knows? Right, but anyway, um, he's, he's due back here, and then he's due to go to India, I think, around the 19th. Now then, What's going on? Why, why are the Indians so uh, cultivating? Are they cultivating? Are they sowing? Are they, are they preparing a meeting ground? 
We don't know. We don't know. But, but, but the point is, yeah. it appears that, you see, like our, our sovereignty uh, is at stake. It is slowly but surely uh, being uh, eroded. Definitely. The, the, the Hamant of the port, is, they say, oh, we didn't sell it. Uh, we leased it. Th these are technically correct. But it's a virtual sale, isn't it? It's 99 years. <laughs> even with all the best will in the world, even the Rana isn't going to live till then, is he? When you say something is given to another country to develop, yeah. what does it indicate for us? It indicates the inefficiency of the politicians here. No? They, are, they are getting someone else to develop a place where you are unable to develop. That someone will never come if that place cannot be developed at all, no? Correct. This is the truth of the matter, no? Yeah. So that means, in the ultimate analysis, we find a set of inefficient fellows who will want their dress prepared, their everything prepared by outsiders. Because they, do, they can't do it themselves. But doesn't it, doesn't it indicate that our politicians don't have the backbone to stand up to these and say no? Uh, now, for example, uh, Imran Khan, he said to the Americans, look, yeah. you're paying us $20 billion, in essence, to kill our own people, to have a, f to have a fight. Uh, and Imran Khan says, no, look, we're not, we'll be friends with you, but we don't want you $20 billion, and we, we, we're through with this fighting business. Because the fighting business is costing the Pakistani economy $80 billion. So the net loss to the Pakistani economy, 80 minus 20, 60. So Imran Khan says no. But the point is this, apart from the money, he's taking on, he's make, taking a stuff stance against uh, the Americans. Do you think we have politicians with enough backbone to stand up to the, to the Chinas and the Indias of this world and say, no, listen, we're not going to give you part of our land or anything. Invest if you must, but that's about it. I mean, there are two, two sides to this for us. You know, one is, that uh, barring a few, we don't have that category of politicians, unfortunately, in our country. You know, they, they are prepared to surrender everything, surrender the, even the sovereignty. But what for? For personal gain? I mean, for survival. For, for survival. their political survival only, no, this is happening now. We wish we have people like I don't say that everything that Imran Khan does is correct. Yeah. But then at least on the face of it, you see the change that he brought about. Yeah. And his immediate actions thereafter, in the immediate aftermath, yeah. is very, very encouraging to the people. Very encouraging. Mm. And then they, they praise him for doing something that was much needed. And he stands on his feet and says, he has the guts to do it. He has the courage to do it. He says, go to hell, we don't want your money. Yeah. And the people are with him. But the you said the right words. The courage to do it. It's yeah. a bit like news first. Yes. Do you know our tagline, don't you? Exactly. The courage to be different. Courage. You have to have that, you know. It's part of the game. But the people will be with you. When you uphold such principle stands, when you stand erect, when you firmly take up a position, no, I am not ready to surrender my, uh, compromise my sovereignty. Yeah. People, however the hardships that fall on them are, they will support you. Do you know, <clears throat> when we talk about people who, there are some names, we talk about the People's Bank. I remember, writing uh, in some years gone by uh, for, 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 for the leader. The, and I did a story about this very thing, about the people who are, uh, who are agencies who supply staff to the banks. And the People's Bank, we pointed it out many years ago, and I believe, Mr. Rishpala, you also uh, uh, discussed this matter with us at the time. Now then, there's Manu Titiwela. He's been, this is a name that keeps <laughs> recurring uh, all along. They end up as advisors on finance companies, then they, then they become advisors uh, at, the, at the Ministry of Finance. 
and they, they're constantly there. It's a, it's a recurring name. They are these omnipresent characters in this country, unfortunately. You know, they are, they are everywhere. Whatever the circle is, whatever the regime is, whatever the government formation is, they are there. Now, if, you go, are if you go to the BOI yeah. and you make an application, yeah. it mysteriously goes to another department, Agency for Development, mm. or something like that, yeah. and there's Mangaleapa there. But it's directly nothing to do with the BOI, yeah. right? And this is nothing but designed to be inside a little circle. Everyone's enjoying their perks, and the investment climate in Sri Lanka is, not be, is totally ill-prepared for any opportunities uh, available to foreigners. Whereas if there is one institution that has failed its mission in this country, a very noble mission that it was set up for, yes. it is the BOI. When Jaya Jawadana, as the first president, he initiated this, he took this initiative, he had a vision behind it. Unfortunately, due to very many reasons, it did not materialize. But it is now over 30, 40 years after this institution was set up. And it is yet to be an institution, a meaningful institution, contributing its role for the investment improvement of this country. You mm. make an application to the BOI. There are departments in the BOI to which people are made to run with their papers. I mean, they have failed to set up a one simple opening and a desk where a client is attended to overall requirements. This a true one-stop shop. One-stop shop. We have been talking about this for several years. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Se several years. Now, what we want is you lodge an application. Why do you want to make that investor run behind so many jokers? Yeah. And everyone is wanting something. Correct. This is a something department. What is this? I mean, what we want to do is let an investment respectfully come to a country, find out from an available list of resources what is available to be developed in that country. Indeed. And then, after selecting his base for investment, he should be able to say, well, I have found this place. This is in your list. Okay. This is in your bank of lands or whatever resources. I wish to invest so much and this is my application. Appraise it. Obviously, a, a mature viewer, uh, obviously a mature viewer is reminding us that our former president, Premadasa, threw the Indians out after J.R. Jai Wardner erred. He then developed Sri Lanka beyond recognition without a formal education. This is, somebody is talking about the development work uh, done by President Premadasa in terms of housing and so on. And he, he didn't care tuppence for the Indians. Yeah. He asked them to leave. And um, he had his own unique way of getting rid of them. But still, um, the, the fact is that he stood up to uh, to the superpower. There's a glaring, no, 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 I, I don't dispute that because there's a glaring instance where a leader of a country, he stood up to his position and he was a down-to-earth man. He rose up from the smaller, among the smaller people and he knew the suffering of the people. When politicians are planted from top, you know, these, uh, these silver spoon boys, when they come, and do you, you remember? They he, don't he, know the suffering of the people. And he gave, uh, um, President Premadasa gave uh, export yeah. its due and uh, its due place. Do you remember his initiative to start all the garment factories? Revolutionary, revolutionary. He found a place, instead of waiting for many years for things to uh, gestate, he immediately found a source and a line where he can immediately get results. And what did he find in the garment industry? He knew what was there and he did it. And didn't the country provide employment? Didn't the country earn foreign exchange? Didn't the country find markets overseas? And didn't he therefore create so many, many, many successful entrepreneurs? He has pushed them into action. 
the people whom he knew, people whom he did not know, people whom he heard are capable of doing something, were all taken at group and then they were initiated to do something. That is what we want no, for us. We are, what are we doing today? What are our plans? Even today, what is happening? These are all short-term perspectives which are not delivering anything. Even at the cricket board, the, the Sri Lanka cricket, I just want to say this in a very, very quickly, Sri Lanka cricket had some monies owing to them by an international broadcaster. So they sent them an invoice. On the back of that invoice, an email was sent to that same broadcaster saying, by the way, we'd like this money transferred to the payment to be sent to another account. And they asked for something like 5.5 million rupees, around 880 million, uh, sorry, 550 million dollars, 5.5 million dollars, 880 million rupees to be transferred to a private account in Hong Kong. <laughs> and it is not the Sri Lanka cricket people who found out about this, but it was the vigilance of the international broadcaster who then communicated back to Sri Lanka cricket and said, hey chaps, is this true? Do you want this money going to blah blah? <laughs> That's a fraud. Yeah. And then the minister doesn't know whether he said he complained to the FCID or to the CID. <laughs> and they, they, it's a joke. And, you, and you, the minister, as a legal man, should know that if you go to the FCI, why did he go to the FCID anyway? He should have gone to the CID. I think if you go back into the list of cricket playing countries, there is no other country like Sri Lanka which has faced so much of criticism and adversities about the, uh, the, like Sri Lanka in the administration of cricket. This is the worst thing that, not the playing. The administration of cricket has been messed up totally and wholly. And you know, again, politics have gone into cricket and then people who should not be in cricket, you know, who are otherwise disqualified by, according to ethical reasons, yeah. are occupying important places. Talk, well, uh, talking about, talking yeah. about the, the right and the qualified people. And this is exactly what is happening again, back again, to the BOI. Yeah. You know, what is this Malik Samari Wickham doing? Trying to develop Sri Lanka, signing FTAs, not going back to cabinet, and then standing up there. And he has the gall to say in parliament, well, you know, why don't you go to court? Because he knows that the court system is so blessed slow that nothing's going to happen. It'll be long before, it'll be two elections before anything ever is done. And finishing off with Sri Lanka cricket. Yeah. It's all controlled by <laughs> just a few families. Yeah. We, we, what we need and what the past cricketers of some repute and integrity were asking for and continue to ask for is a change of the constitution. The change of the Sri Lanka cricket constitution and amendments to the sports law to accommodate those changes. And play cricket. And get on with <laughs> letting our boys play cricket <laughs> and seeking out the talent that talent that is inherent in most Sri Lankans out there for cricket yeah. cricket cricket glorious cricket Rusri Palatenakon thank you ever so much for coming in and, and um, sharing your thoughts here um, but pleasure. does it make you despondent no I, I'm, I'm very happy to contribute you know at least people say People are little. People who are listening to us are little frustrated. For us, I must tell you this. Yeah. They say you all talk all this truth and reveal all these things. What happens in the end? That is their frustration. I have met many such people. They are full of praise to what we are doing. Yeah. At the same time, they are frustrated. They say, "What is the use?" This is the unfortunate message. But don't get discouraged. Absolutely. I must tell them, don't Absolutely. get discouraged. We are doing a part of the job as human beings that we should do and we will continue to do it. Absolutely. Well said, Mr. Rishipala. And Sri Lanka is an awfully nice place. That's why the tourists keep coming here. Take care and God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali.
Thank you.